Good evening, this is Keith All, and today we're going to be talking about how we can um, load data into our Excel spreadsheet with a connection to a Microsoft Access database. And I'm using uh, Excel, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft Access to do this, and I'm using the 2016 version. So what you see up here on the screen is a copy of my database. And as you can see, I filled the data already with uh, data already in there. Now, uh, what? here's my Excel spreadsheet. And what this refresh button will do is when I click on it, it's going to populate this area with the data that comes from this database right here. So it's going to extract this information here and display it into the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to click on this button and you'll see the data load and then we're going to go into the code um, on how to do this so you could learn how to do this for yourself. So as you can see, it loaded the data, and it's doing some sorting, uh, obviously. And it's also going to be putting in this line border here, and it's also going to uh, uh, create totals for these columns. And what it's doing here in the quarter column is it's going to concatenate the year and the sales quarter from the database. So as you can see, these are two separate columns here, but I put them in the Excel spreadsheet as one column. So I combined the values of these two columns into one in the Excel spreadsheet. So let's go over to the Excel spreadsheet and let's uh, look at the code um, that is behind this refresh button. And basically, this button is just basically taken from the developer tab and then inserting um, some uh, inserting a button. From right up here is one of the uh, form controls. So that's what I did to create that button. So let's uh, look at the macro for this. And it's going to be this guy here. And let's click on edit. So what it's doing is it's going to call this button click. So whenever I click on the button, it creates a button click event. And what I'm doing is I'm making a call to this um, subroutine or function here. So it's going to call here and it's automatically going to execute, find the refresh data subroutine and it's automatically going to execute this code here. So let's go line by line. First of all, in order to do this, to make a connection to the database using the data access objects, you must have reference to it. So you have to go up to your tools menu in your Visual Basic Editor and select references. And now you have to scroll through this list box here and make a checkbox next to the Microsoft Office 16.0 Access Database Engine Objects. Now this number here, 16.0, might be different on your machine depending on what operating system you have and what version of uh, Microsoft Access that you have. Since I'm using 2016, this is the number that comes with it. So our next step is, of course, we're going to do some error checking. And um, on error, it says if any error occurs, it's going to go to this sub error uh, location here in this code. 
So here's the sub air routine here, and it's going to first of all clear out the status bar, and your status bar for XL is right down in this area here. Let's uh, move this up here. If you look at the uh, lower left hand corner where you see update complete underneath the sheet one tab is your status bar in Excel and you could display and write status as down there so from here let's go back up here in the code And then if an error occurs, it's going to create a message box with this text, and it's going to grab the error.number and error.description that occurs. So you'll be able to see exactly what happens. And then after it displays that message box and the user clicks on OK, it's going to resume up here, sub-exit. And it's going to execute this code here. Let's scroll back up to the top. Okay, our first, we're going to be declaring, declaring some variables. And we're going to be declaring, uh, declaring a constant. Now, you use a constant if you have a value that never changes throughout your application. And you can name that variable as a name constant and use it in place of a literal value. So we're going to use this variable dbloc as a placeholder to hold the actual location of your database on your PC. Again, DAO stands for data access objects. We're going to declare a variable for the database object. We're going to declare one for the record set. We're going to declare some variables for our workbook and our worksheet. And we're going to declare some variables for the record count, which we'll use later on uh, to hold the number of records you're getting back from the uh, access database and we're also going to have a variable for your SQL that we're going to hold uh, that we're going to use later on to select from the database now we want to set up references to our workbook and our worksheet and this is what these two lines of code will do it'll get the reference to the active work workbook which is the workbook that we're currently working with and it's also going to set up a reference to that workbook and the sheet that we're working with and worksheets with a parenthesis of one that means it's going to look for the first worksheet we're going to also clear the contents first of all of this worksheet so that's what we're doing we're taking a reference to the actual worksheet and we're we're selecting a range a predefined range and then we're going to clear the contents of that range now at this point we want to communicate with the user so we're going to use the application object and the status bar method and we're going to display a message on the bottom left hand corner of the Excel workbook. And we do this in case that if this is running on a server and multiple people are running things, um, this is the reason why we want to display a message back to the user just to let them know that uh, the, uh, the application is working on it. So our next thing that we're going to use is the application object cursor method. And basically we're going to de define what the cursor is going to look like when we're accessing the database. And if it takes a little bit longer 
Uh, in this case, we're going to show the hourglass. These statements here is we're building our SQL statement. In other words, we're selecting what we want from the database so we can return it back to this spreadsheet. This statement here is we're going to open up the record set. So we're going to take the database object that we defined up here, DB, and um, we're going to open up the, a, a record set. We're going to pass it the SQL statement, which is what we defined up here. And what DB open snapshot means is basically we're going to open this record set as a read-only record set. We're not going to be able to write back to it at this time. Now, at this time, we're going to uh, also copy the record set to the spreadsheet at this point. So basically, we're, we're going to keep on notifying the users in case it's taken too long by using the application.statusbar method. We're now going to check to see if the record set record count is zero. If it is, we're going to display a message box stating that fact, and then we're going to exit out of this routine. If the record count is not zero, then that means it's greater than zero. And uh, we're, what we're going to do is, in order to find the number of rows in the record set, we need to move to the last row in the record set. That's just basically how this record set uh, object reference works. So we're going to use the move last method. It'll move to the last record. And now we're going to get the record count and to, uh, put it into this variable that we de uh, declared above. Now we're going to move back to the first record. And at this point, we're going to write everything out to the spreadsheet. So we're going to take a reference to the worksheet that we're going to write to. We're going to take a range and point it to, and we're going to start that range in column C5. And then we're going to copy, use the copy from record set method. Uh, to hold all the uh, data, and that's what this RS is. This is a reference to our record set. Now we're using uh, other uh, functions here, and basically what we're going to do is it, for every, what this is doing for every record that is within, uh, that comes back from the record set reference, we're going to write this out. So basically what this line does is um, after all the records are written to the spreadsheet, it's going to uh, create a, a, a border or a, a double-edged border on there. And we'll show you that in, this, in a second. Now this uh, line of code is basically it's going to build our our formula for the two columns. And then we're going to display a message back to the user using the application.statusbar method. And that's basically how I did this. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. As you can see, it built a, a, a double line border here. And if you look up here, it build, automatically built the uh, formula for this. So this is how we, uh, this is one way in how you can extract data from an Access database and bring it into your Excel spreadsheet. I hope this tutorial was very helpful for you today, and I hopefully uh, this will help you in your, um, in your career. Thank you again for stopping by, and I'll be adding more videos on how we could work with Excel and, and the Access database. Bye for now.